Hello and welcome to Chatterboxes. I'm Charlie. And I'm Emma. Firstly, Salford has been home to bank robberies over the past couple of weeks. With more than one crime in two weeks, this has shaken up the community around Salford's shopping city. Zach has more. Hi, my name's Zach Raphael, reporting on the bank robbery happened here at Salford Shopping City at 10 past 7 a.m. on Tuesday, 19th September. Two armed guards with a crowbar jumped the security guard and escaped a substantial amount of cash uh, in a blue vehicle in the early hours of the morning. The police have uh, put out calls for people with any information to report on the incident. We later spoke to local shoppers, many of whom were unaware of the robbery that took place at the Royal Bank of Scotland just the day before. Business owners at the shopping centre seemed to be more aware of the incident, and Floris Knoll was able to share his thoughts on what happened. What do you know about the Royal Bank of Scotland? I don't know anything that went on. All I know, and it's rumour say, is I think it was actually a cash delivery driver that was attacked. Mm. I don't think they got in the bank, but I don't know any more than that. Okay. And how does that kind of make you feel, something like that happening in this area where you work? I think it makes everybody very alert. Mm. You know, you're very much, um, um, you're just checking, you know, your money, checking what's going on around yeah. you. Um, yeah. Have you been informed by any security or police about safekeeping or things to keep the area? No. no. Would that make you feel better if something, something like that did happen? Um, yeah, I think people need to be made aware, yeah. you know, of what's gone on yeah. and, you know, if another situation happens, you know, how to react in, in, in such a way. Mm. Um, and you were saying earlier there, there have been other banks as well. Yes. Which ones? Which ones were those? Uh, it was the one on the front, yeah. uh, which is nationwide, nationwide, and the Halifax on the bank, okay. on the back of the precinct. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. After talking to Noel, we walked to the Pendleton Police Headquarters and were startled to find its close proximity to the Royal Bank of Scotland. With the Greater Manchester Police Headquarters only around the corner from the Royal Bank of Scotland, the daring armed robbers escaped with their substantial amount of cash in a blue vehicle in the early hours of Tuesday. The police have also been leading an invest investigation into a previous uh, armed robbery which happened just 12 days prior at a Santander branch in Ellesmere shopping centre in Walkden. On September 7th, gunmen with more than escaped with more than £100,000. Armed with a handgun and a machete, the gang walked into the bank just before 1.20 and fled. Twitter can be a hub of controversy, especially among our sports personalities. Here's our reporters for more. Social media plays a big part in football today, allowing fans a personal connection with their favourite stars. However, recently, some players have been known to cause controversy. Most notably, Man City's recently signed defender, Benjamin Mendy. Mendy has gained a reputation of the Twitter, the Twitter king, sharing comedic tweets with his fans and his teammates. However, not all of his tweets have been so well received. After a 2-0 win at Brighton in August, Mendy tweeted to mock Brighton captain Lewis Dunk after he scored an own goal in the game. This received much criticism from pundits and managers alike, who stated that he was being too unprofessional and should have thought about his actions before he tweeted. Since then, Mendy has apologised for his actions. Man City boss Pep Guardiola has since implemented a social media code of conduct which players must obey. We've now asked a few fans whether they agree with this new rules or not. I think there should be some rules that players can and can't do, um, especially online. They can tweet stuff and get themselves in trouble, and it makes the clubs all bad as well. So, probably should be something in place. Uh, well, I think for the football club, maybe bringing in rules, these are very strict managers bringing in rules is maybe a good thing to do. But for us as fans, you want to see that from the players, you want to connect with the players on social media or in person. So, it's a bit of a mission. I think the players should be allowed some freedom and should be allowed to, shouldn't be controlled completely. Like let them um, have some banter with each other, let them like, you know, be friendly with each other and joke around. Did you know here at the University of Salford we have three different radio stations? Our reporters went to speak to a shock radio presenter. University of Salford, we have a student radio station called Shock Radio. We interviewed Adam to find out more. How long has the station been running for then? 
Um, so Shop Radio has been running for over 15 years now, so quite a while. And uh, every year we've got a new committee that takes over and kind of we've, we've always got bigger and better. We've now uh, got over 20,000 listeners per, per year, okay, uh, which we managed to calculate last year. And we're also the, the largest society with over 200 members. Okay, and uh, how long have you been part of it? You've been part of it from your first year onwards? Or? Yeah, so as soon as I joined university, which was two years ago now, uh, going into my final year, mm -hmm. um, I joined Shock. Um, didn't really know much about it. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. uh, really enjoyed it, got into it, and uh, yeah, managed to work my way up to, to running it now. Okay, and because you said you didn't know that much about radio, would you say that this station as a whole is open to everyone? So even if you've got no previous experience, anyone can join in? Yeah, so you don't have to have any kind of radio experience at all. All training is completely provided. So you come down, we will show you how to use the desk, how to operate microphones, how to kind of plan a show as well. Uh, and anything that you want to do, we can, we can try and do it. We asked Adam how students can apply. This is what he had to say. All you need to do is log on to our website to apply, um, shockradio.co.uk. Uh, there's a big button on there that says apply. You basically fill in the little application form uh, and then we'll get it. We'll basically have a read through, invite you in for a little chat and then get you on air as soon as we can. As well as shot radio, the university can also offer Keys Radio which will start later this year and if you want to get involved and check for updates you can check out our Facebook page. That's it for today, see you next time, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>